So the second part is the, the well, how we uh, manage containers in, in eFlows. So uh, the standard way that we use containers uh, is that when we create a container in a, in a builder machine that they have this an instruction set, uh, we normally use uh, the dev and RPM uh, packages of the operating system. And what is doing this, these packages are already compiled and they are uh, compiled with a, a generic compilation to be uh, compatible with all the, all the all the possible processors of the same family. So there are not processor optimizations in this case. So when you try to run uh, um, uh, this container image in a, in a machine that is uh, Intel, you will get, uh, it will run because they have the same, they are in the same family and they have the same instruction set but they are not going to execute the specific instructions that they have this processor for optimizing the execution. For instance, the, the AVX uh, Intel, the vector or CMD uh, instructions or, or this kind of thing. So what we propose to do in, in Airflows is that we are going to integrate different uh, the tools that are already existing in the, in, the, in the market. And they are open source, most of them. That is that we can use whatever builder machine, but to uh, build um, containers that are target for a specific HPC system. So with uh, what we are going to use is the, the, build, the Docker buildx uh, uh, tool, the QEMU that we emulate the, an, 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 a platform, and also a SPAC or EasyBuild. SPAC and EasyBuild are, uh, are tools to uh, install uh, software in HPC systems, managing the different uh, compilers, the different versions of the, of the or, or optimizations of the architecture, and, and also well, they, they are used uh, already in the, in the HPC system to in some HPC systems to build the, 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 the thing. So and what we are doing with this is creating a container that, for instance, in this example, we have specified for the our PC platform uh, and uh, with, the, with the optimizations of a power nine. So we will have a container that will be, um, can be built uh, for this specific uh, uh, processor and also with a specific tool chain uh, uh, specifying the GCC or the MPI to be compatible with the versions that we have in the, in the, in the, in the, in the HPC system. So more or less the way that we, we have designed to, to work in this case is that uh, we have a, a, a service that is running in a builder machine. And in this service, uh, we have the input of the, what is the workflow and the step that we want to, to, to create an image and, uh, and the target machine that we want to create the image. So if there is already a, an existing image for this uh, architecture, we will reuse it. So we don't uh, build again. But if there is not a, a, a machine, uh, an, an existing image, what we will do is that we will mount the, the information that is in the workflow registry and in the software catalog, and we will create a, a building environment and generate a Docker file that will be used in the buildex uh, with the buildex. Uh, platform to create a container image for this uh, specification. In this case, what we have in the workflow registry, uh, well, we have the Tosca and also uh, that is the description of the, of the workflow. And we have the, the PyComs code and here the, the software requirements for, for each of the workflow step. So in this case, we are uh, using these two information to create the, the the building environment, and in the software catalog, we are getting the part that describes the, the software installation. That in this case, we are using a Spark in, in these two cases. We have the Spark YAML that is specifying the different resource uh, software requirements, and the package.py is the, is the description of each software, how we install it. And with this, we once we have the, the container image, we push to the container registry to have uh, an already uh, uh, an image that can be reused by the other user. 
And also we can create a singularity image, just converting the Docker image to a singularity image and store in a, in a, in a repository in the, also in this service. So this is more or less the, the overview. And this is more or less how we uh, uh, describe the installation of the, of the software package. Yes, we have different, uh, uh, different uh, examples. Uh, for instance, uh, well, basically you define the dependencies to other packages and you can, uh, for instance, uh, define the, the execution of a script and setting some kind of environments that will be uh, set up in the, during the, the, the execution and another environment that is created for the, for the building. And there is also, this is the generic package where you have to define everything. And there are other packages that are for the typical uh, building uh, systems like the CMake or, or Auto Tools that you just need to, to, to define less parameters, not all the, all the things. And also there are also Python packages to specify what, uh, what all of these uh, tools are uh, managed as Python packages. So you can find here uh, more about the how, for doing this, we are using the, the Spark uh, packages. So you can find more information in these links. So then what, what we do in the, in the Spark YAML, what we have is basically just a, a description of the, of the software that we require. For instance, in this, for this workflow, we will require forms, uh, uh, Dislip and, and Kratos. And, and what we create at, at runtime is to uh, add some information about the, the infrastructure that we want to, to create in, the, in the, uh, the software. So, well, and, and with this package, we create the, the Docker file and, and we do the rest of the, of the execution uh, and it's installing the, the HPC packages with the, with the, the Spark uh, software. But the same methodology can be used also for, for ECBIL because they are very similar tools. So then uh, this is the API that we have for the, for the image creation. We have a REST API that basically you, you use the post, uh, uh, request, a post request, HTTP request, uh, where you specify in a JSON file the, 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 uh, well, the machine that you want to do, the, the platform, the architecture, the kind of container that you want to create, the workflow and the step ID, and if you want to force the, the, the thing. And then the response will be a, a, an ID of this creation. So, and we have also a simple client uh, that you can uh, get from the Git repository to, uh, to do the, 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 the things. Uh, you have to specify more or less the access things, the user password and the URL of the service, and then the build command and the, the, the JSON of the, of the request, and you will receive the same. So for checking the status of the creation, uh, it's, a, it's a get request uh, passing the creation ID, and you will get the response of one status. If there is an error, you will get the error message and the, the image ID that you are generating and the, the file name. The image ID will be the, the the, uh, the Docker ID of the, of the image and the file name will be the singularity uh, image file. So, no, uh, yes, uh, no, it's, it's, uh, it's to check the, the build uh, with this ID. So you will get the status mm -hmm. of this, of, of this build. Okay, it's it's a uh, how we design the, the, the rest. Normally, you have you do a post in a in a in a resource in the REST API and the yeah, in status. the client is a status because it's uh, yeah. uh, and then if you want to get a generated uh, singularity image, if it's a Docker image, you will you can retrieve from the Docker registry. Uh, and if it's a, a singularity image, you can retrieve the singularity image uh, with the doing this uh, this get call in images download and the image file name, and you can use also the the in the client this to to, restore, to retrieve the, the image. There is a question. Yes. 
Păi, păi împlinește și tu. Bun. Well, the thing is that yeah, the the reason why we do in this way is because uh, with Docker we can so it is very easy to pass from a Docker uh, container to a singularity container. It is not as easy to do the reverse. So this is why we we have the, the we use this this way. Uh, the the but. If you change the Docker file by the, the definition of a singularity, you could create the singularity directly. But we wanted to have the, the compatibility with, with both systems. So if you want to have just the Docker image, because in your HPC you support Docker, you will be able to get the Docker image. Uh, and if in most of the of the HPC systems that we have uh, sent a, a survey, we saw that they support singularity, and this is why. Uh, we also support singularity, but I think that this can be extended to other other systems, not just only singularity and and not. Okay, so I can do. I don't know if I'm very. Okay. It was a generic question. Yeah. Uh, can the workflows span multiple HPC clusters at the same time, or only one? Well, what we have supported now is that the same service it's uh, executed in uh, can be exe deployed and executed in several other sites. And what we are working for the second uh, period of the project is to support one uh, workflow that one part is deployed in one system and, and another part is in the second one. But currently, the, the, the API that we have it's more for the same. Uh, system that we deploy in several sites. I don't know for what's the time. Uh, yeah. I'm yeah, only on time. So, uh, well, uh, I have just a, a short uh, demo. I can do may maybe just the part of the of the image creation. Uh, <laughs> So basically, it's just repeating these steps uh, for a uh, so for the image creation. So uh, basically, this is the yes. So we have here the so here we have the well the specification of the request and basically the uh, this command we are doing the build request where we have the the, the service. So it responds with the ID. So what we can do is to check the status. Okay. One more. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> or go in the first row. <laughs> so here I'm just uh, requesting the status. In this case, the creation has finished because I already executed uh, first the, the execution. And then the, uh, the, the last uh, step will be to, uh, to get the, this, this image. <laughs> So here we are retrieving the image that we have created. So also if we, so with this image, what we can do is connect to the to the site, and well, I I have already downloaded the this image here. Uh,
So here I have the, the image and we can launch the, the simulation just invoking Pycoms and providing the, the image that we have created and the commands to execute the thing. You will see all, all of this stuff that I, I'm doing manually, you will see in the hands-on how to do uh, in, uh, automatically with uh, the Tosca description. So we can launch and see that. So with this, executing and, and running with this image. So well, the execution will take 10 minutes, but we are a little bit late. So uh, this is more or less uh, an overview of these two, two parts. Uh, any question or? No? So then. Maybe you can show the, the, the iPhone part for this case also? Yes, yeah. You yeah, this is uh, this is in the workflow registry. I I tell you the, to use the the ROM pillar one, the reduce order model step. So this is the Spark uh, YAML. Thank you for <laughs> remembering me. There is a Python. Yes, also. and the Python things are in the. Let me check instead of in the workflow registry, the Pythons are in the software pattern. Uh -huh. No, no, no. It's uh, I, I had prepared to show it, but I didn't remember the. Yeah, in the software catalog, there is uh, the packages, and here we have the, the POMS one. And this is what is retrieved automatically by the service, and you you get uh, so this is the yes. And and then the the, the YAML, you said that uh, it's kind of modified for the yeah. It's modified to pro to add the part of the architecture or the MPI uh, version that you want to, to create the, the, the this, this is done uh, automatically by the service. So the service is getting this, this uh, the YAML, well, the YAML that I show, the original one and generating the, the new one for this execution. So if you change the, the, the properties of the machine, you also change the, the, the YAML. Okay. Any other question? So, no. So, yeah. You want to use the same? 